Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about related rates. Now, whenever you have a related rates problem, uh, well, related rates is one of the applications of differentiation. Something is changing and it's affecting something else. You want to know how much change is going to happen in the other quantity. Like for example, this is the area of a circle is going to change because you change the radius by a percentage. So for many related rate problems, what you get will be um, a question like the radius is increasing at the rate of two centimeters per, per second. Okay, but in this problem, there is no time. So you can't, it's not depending on time, it's depending on itself because it's expressed as a percentage. Remember, if you get a 10% percent, a increase in your pay, we don't know how much that is. It depends on how much you were getting paid before. Okay, so a 10% increase in anything doesn't mean anything. It depends on the original. So if you look at this, uh, what would be the percentage increase in the area if the radius increases by 0.3%? Well, it depends on what the original radius was, which we don't know. But we know this 0.3% could be written as a fraction, okay? We could write it as, or as a decimal, 0.003. So let's start with that. Let's clean this up. We know that the 0.3% is the same thing as 0.003, okay? Which is simply the fraction expression of the change the change in the radius compared to the original radius. This is it. But we don't use this symbol when we do differentiation. We just say it's dr over r. This is important for you to understand. And the question is also asking us to find the percentage increase. So what we're looking for, we want to find, okay? We want to find dA compared to the original. So we're looking for this, we already have this. If you have this concept, this is gonna be super easy for you because all you're looking for is you want dA to be on top of A and you want dR to be on top of R. Whatever connection they have, that's the basis for your answer. So now that we've established that 0.003 is dR over R, let's go make something up, okay? That's what we do in math. So now the first thing you want to do is establish the relationship between the two things that are changing. So we know the radius is changing and the area is changing. What's the connection? Well, what's the formula for the area of a circle? A equals pi r squared. Well, if A changes with respect to the radius, we can as well take the derivative of both sides with respect to r. So we can say dA dr will be equal to, if you take the derivative of this, it's going to be 2 pi r. As you can see, this is the, yeah, the circumference of a circle, but we'll go there another day. So now we can establish that dA equals 2 pi r dr. Huh, it's beginning to look nice, okay? Now, we're almost done, because the next thing you need is to be able to establish dA over A and dr over r, okay? So look at this very first um, condition. A equals 2 pi r. We can divide, so let's call this equation, um, equation i, and this is equation 2. You can divide equation 2 by equation 1, okay? It's a very nice method. It's clean, and it gives you your answer so quickly. So here, we're going to divide this by this, so we have dA over A, which is what we're looking for, is equal to 2 pi r dr divided by 2 pi r, by pi r squared, I'm sorry, pi r squared. If you look at this expression, what does it tell you? It tells you, you can take this pi out, you can simplify this, and you're gonna have two here and dr over r. So it is two times dr over r. Huh, what is dr over r? We just established that from the beginning. 0.003. Okay, so this is equal to 2 multiplied by 0 0.003. 
Okay, that gives us 0 0.006. That's dA over A. Now, this is the fraction which we can now re represent in percentage form. Well, in percentage form, you just multiply by 100 and that gives you 0 0.6. This is the simple answer to this question. I picked a very easy question so you can understand the concept. If it's a percentage, this is all you have to do. Establish the original relationship, then do the differentiation depending on which one is changing, and just plug in back. Plug back in the number you were given from the beginning and you're good. Okay, I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and give it a share and just give it a shout out by putting a comment in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.